friends welcome back to llama mama kayla's yarn tube i'm kayla and i am so thankful that you are here today i hope you will grab you a drink and a project to work on and sit down and visit with me and enjoy some time together um, i'm trying to measure the width of my blanket and right now it's like 46 and a half inches wide and i'm not sure how long just yet but um holding it up to my body and you know i'm a large person it does reach around to the back side on both sides like not just the sides of my body but i can um not quite touch the sides together i mean it might stretch and do it but i'm not really pulling tight so anyway i just wanted to tell you guys that because i know some people are kind of wondering but um we are almost down to the wire okay it's tuesday so we got tuesday wednesday thursday right that's what that's the days we got left to work on this blanket i mean you can work on it more after that but that's the days i'm gonna can that i'm gonna work on the blanket and i'm gonna be done on thursday no matter what okay so um i just wanted to show you like i really like the color flow that i've got of head going on here um just showing you you know like my blanket and i am going to take a picture of it all laid out when it's done because i in the beginning i took a picture of one granny square and then i'll take a picture of um, it all laid out to show what that granny square grew into so here i am now what am i doing <laughs> somebody please tell me what i'm doing <laughs> okay um if you have missed videos and you're like just tuning in you don't really know what i'm doing well you see that i don't either so we're we're in the same boat <laughs> okay so i have one of these balls right here that i am going to tie on because that is my next color after the white i have been doing um the variegated so that's my next color and that is my last color for this round I mean, not round, but this uh, set of colors. Because if um, I've been doing them in sequence order, I just haven't been doing the same size. They've been random size balls so that they don't, you know, just all end at the same stopping place and such. So that's what um, I got going on there. And so what I'm going to do, this is the last ball for that sequence. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, and then for the last set of balls, I'm going to go ahead and add one more round or one more ball of each color for Tuesday and Wednesday. That's my goals. Yeah, today's Tuesday, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to keep working on it. So Tuesday and Wednesday... My goal is to put these all these balls in. So after this one, I think I have gray next. Oh, I might have another gray I need to do. Yeah, because that's not the last one. The gray is... Yeah, so after this one, I'll have the gray. Then I'll be done with this set. I need another gray ball to go up here. Then I'll start over with my pale pink, the blush, the fuchsia, purple, white, variegated, and then I need another ball of gray. And I have my gray yarn right here so I can make another ball of that. So that's what I'm going to do Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday, I am just going to start going around it in gray. The gray will be the last color that i use that's why i didn't make a ball excuse me i remember now <laughs> this was like 15 minutes ago um when i get to the gray i'm just going to keep going and use up the rest of my yarn on that gray skein and i'll show you in just a minute how much i have left on that and I'm just going to use that gray and go a couple of rounds in the gray to kind of like be my border, if you want to say. 
You would know, okay, I thought I tied it to the gray. I was like, what in the world? Because <laughs> that would be something I would do. Okay, so here's the gray I have left. And, I mean, I don't know that I'll use it all, but maybe. If it runs out, it runs out. But I'm going to go around, I mean, I'll have to get back to this in the gray to close it off. Um, but anyway, I'm going to try to go all the way around it a couple of times with the gray to make a border at the very end. So, yes, Tuesday, today's Tuesday, this ball, this ball for sure, and hopefully a couple more balls. Wednesday, the rest of the balls that I have left, Thursday, gray. That's my plans. And then I will be done with this blanket on Thursday. Now, you know, you don't have to be done with yours on Thursday. You can keep cro keep right on the crocheting. And I'll just see what it, you know, what becomes of oh God, What becomes of it after that? Good grief. And as I've said before, um, I can't really pin down my plans for uh, for March because I don't know. I don't know what kind of condition I'm going to be in. I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, having surgery or what's going to be going on with me. I just, I just don't know. So I don't, I, have, I know I have things I want to do, but I mean, my crazy life, this finger... I just don't know where I'm going to be on that. But anyway. Oh, I hope you all are having a great week so far. I know we're only in, on Tuesday into this week. But let's make it a good week. No matter what's going on. No matter if your finger is dying. <laughs> I'm going to have a good week anyway. That's my plan. To have a good week. Well, guys, I um, am loving all of your questions, and I sat here just now and went through um, the Sunday Crochet Chat video. Is that what it was called? No, the Thursday one? I don't know. The one before Monday. I just went through that and wrote down um, a whole list of questions that was on there. I loved reading all of uh, your guys' answers about what animal you would be if you if you you know were an animal, what would you want to be? Um, I loved it. I loved every answer on that because you know we're all unique and everybody had reasons for whatever animal. One lady said she wanted to be her husband's dog because he takes very good care of her. I think it was a dog. Um, yeah, it was just it was awesome. I loved reading all those answers. But anyway, um, so I'm going to get started answering some questions from that video. And if you have a question you'd like for me to answer, drop it in the comments below this video. And I will do my best to answer that question. Now, sometimes I might skip a question because it's not, not something I can answer at this time. Um, you know, things happen in lives and families and stuff and um, sometimes I just can't answer a question. But anyway, I'll do my best. Put all my balls over there. And then I'll put this one ball here to roll around on the desk to drive us all crazy. <laughs> Several people have asked, why don't I put that ball in a yarn bowl or a cereal bowl or something or cup or something? Because it wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> No, my yarn bowl is so dusty. I don't want to put it in there. I could probably take those hooks out of that It's a Beautiful Day to Crochet cup and throw the balls in there. Throw the ball in there. But, I don't know. I like seeing it roll around. Um, I did not call the doctor Monday, yesterday, about my finger. I I, I talked about doing it. I talked about it with Angela, I talked about it with Big Daddy, and then it came down to it and I didn't do it. Because, I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to say it's time yet. 
But I'm watching it. I mean, I'm not going to let gangrene run down into my my hand. I'll, I'll do something before then. Um, and sometimes doctors, I've seen people where doctors just leave the finger and let it self-amputate itself. That has got to be some painful. And I'd probably done went up there and shot that doctor because that is some painful stuff. Let me just tell you. Letting the finger self-amputate? Mm-mm. I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, because basically you're letting your finger rot off your hand. Nope, can't do it. Um, but anyway, I'm, I know I need to call, but gosh, it's hard. It's hard to say, okay, uh, I'm coming to see, because when I go through the orthopedic doctor, there's no, oh, let's try this, let's try that, let's, he's like, okay, how about Thursday? I mean, that's the way he's going to be. You know, when I go in for an appointment, whatever opening he has in the next few days to the next week is what he's going to schedule me at. It's, he's not there to, like, because I then went to the doctors to try to save it. And so he's the last stop, okay? So that's why. And, yes, I'm on all the medications. Trust me, I'm... On high doses of Viagra, high doses of a blood pressure medicine that opens up. It's another vasodilator type thing. I'm on all that. I mean, I'm seriously lightheaded, nauseated, dizzy from all that medication. And Lindsay asked me about, uh, have I tried something else? It's an over-counter thing that's supposed to also... Um, do the same thing that those medicines do. And Lindsay, thank you for, you know, suggesting that, but I'll tell you why I don't well, I'm I doubt it would be more potent than what the medication that I'm already taking. Plus, I'm already I'm taking this high dose of Viagra. I'm taking this, you know, a big dose of this um, blood pressure medicine that does the same thing. It opens up. It's a vasodilator and opens up and all that kind of stuff. And already I have my own medications that do clash. And uh, my doctor talked to the pharmacist about it and he said, this was his words, it's a risk we're willing to take. And he looked at me and said, right. And I said, right. Because I've told him that before. He knows. We've done it with every finger, and it's a risk that I'm willing to take. Okay, so if I was to go and, t you know, take some more medicine that does the same thing on my own, my blood pressure could really bottom out if I'm, you know, taking too much of that. And it's just scary to take over-the-counter medicines um when you take a lot of medications already to know what clashes with your medications and stuff and you know what I'm talking about you're a nurse so yeah that's why I'm not you know why I wouldn't try that is because I'm already on high doses of that and I just I'm already so lightheaded and dizzy and you just don't know I'm holding on to the walls walking through the house sometimes um because, you know, I am, and somebody else had said, you know, I think you're, like, overdosed. I am very much greatly overdosed, but we're doing it on purpose, trying to, you know, see what will happen, see if we can get anything to change. So, yeah, but thank you for the suggestion. You know, I don't take offense to that. Not at all, sister. Not at all. But that's my reasoning for not, you know doing over-the-counter stuff but I don't think it would be as potent as what I'm already taking anyway because I'm on high doses of other stuff but anyway let's see oh uh, uh, several people have asked about the duck blanket I have not I'm not working on it currently um the reason why is because I want to do the face and I want to record doing the face and showing how I'm doing that 
and I want to put that on before the blanket gets too big. If I wait, if I was to work it on that blanket and it got big like this, and then I'm trying to put the face in the middle, trying to flip that blanket over and over and over, you know, back and forth, sewing the face stuff on, that it would I'd get frustrated with it trying to flip a blanket this big. So I'm trying to just keep it small until I put that face on it and then I'm going to work like crazy on it. <laughs> so I haven't I haven't worked on it. I haven't finished it or anything like that. I'm going to make a video doing that face on it and then, you know, and then I'll I'll, I'll update regularly on it when I get busy on it, but right now I'm just kind of focusing on this blanket um because i just got a few more days to work on it and then i'm calling it done because i have worked on this blanket since the first of february so almost 29 days thankfully this year gave us one extra day um sarah thank you so much for that song um she suggested a song or I've been through I've been through the storm but I'm still here and um I tried to find the song but I found one I've been through the fire but I'm still here so is that the one you were thinking of but I listened to it I asked um, Alexa to find it and play it and she did and I listened to it it had a nice beat to it and everything there's also a storm that, um, I mean, not a storm, a song <laughs> that I do like, um, oh, good grief, the name just escaped me, um, basically it's saying, and this might be in the title, um, The God of the Mountains is still God in the Valley. I can't think of the correct title to that song. But um, a pastor friend of mine actually recorded singing that song. And so I have a tape of her singing that. Well, the tape don't work. But I did save it for, because her picture and all is on the on the cover of the tape and everything. So anyway, God in the Valley is the same God in the, on the mountains. Something like that. You probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Several people have looked Patina up on eBay. Now Patina, if you don't know, she's my little poodle dog doll that was made in 1966 in Japan. Okay, so several people have been going and looking her up on eBay, and they're like, ah, the prices. Even Big Daddy did the other night. He said, well, I was going to surprise you with another patina, but when I went to eBay, I was like, oh, my gosh. And so I don't know what it is right now, but there is a, that is not what I paid for patina. Let me just say that, Big Daddy. <laughs> um <laughs> No, I did not pay those kind of prices for patina. Remember, what somebody posts something for on eBay doesn't mean that's what they're selling it for. Um, patina's price goes up and down, up and down. If there's a lot of interest in her, people will be posting that at ridiculous high prices. And eventually, um, I mean, some, some people might sell them at high prices, but they'll keep relisting the same patina you know, three and four times before they realize they need to lower the price or something, you know. Um, and sometimes when people have a higher price and a buy it now thing, um, if you offer them something, you know, significantly lower, they may take it. But right now, there seems to be a good bit of interest in patina, and so the prices are kind of up. But then whenever um, interest dies down, She'll be on there for cheap. And I do know a lady who got her patina at a rummage sale for $1. And some people have found them at thrift stores. So, yeah, not everybody's paying those kind of prices. And I did not, Big Daddy. <laughs> 
No, I told him. I said, them prices go up and down, up and down. He's like, uh-huh. And then, um, they, they just do that. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy what people, you know, will try to make a dollar and post on there, right? But, anyway. And then so, somebody also asked, when we're talking about Patina, somebody asked, did I have a case or what did I put her in when I put her in my purse? Yes, she does have a case, a zipper case. Um, that I put her in. It's just a cheap little case from Dollar Tree. And I put her in that to protect her in my purse. And to keep her little shoes and accessories. You know, keep up with all that. One day I might try to find her a hard case. But, um, that's working for right now, I guess. And let's see, um, so what food do I miss the most now that I, you know, can't eat food? Pizza. I tell you what, I told my friend Angela the other day, I told her I would just almost order a Pizza Hut pepperoni pizza just to suck the grease off of the pizza. <laughs> I couldn't eat it. I mean, I might could put it in my mouth and chew it up and spit it out. But I would not be able to swallow that. The dough, the cheese, that pepperoni does not break up into tiny pieces. None of that's going down my esophagus. And I know that. But I could, like, just suck the grease off of that pizza, right? <laughs> just taste it. Chew it up. Spit it out. Um, I haven't done that. But I'm not beyond doing it. <laughs> I'd still be hungry, but, yeah. Oh, it does sound good. And a hamburger. I ain't had a hamburger in, I don't know, years. Four, five years, maybe. Four years, at least. Probably the last hamburger I had was when me and Angela went to a little shack place and got hamburger and shakes a few years back i don't know it's probably about one last time i've had a hamburger i was trying to think and i just can't remember having a hamburger after that but yeah i miss having a hamburger too and bacon i mean i can't eat bacon because bacon doesn't crumble and break up into pieces it's uh, it wouldn't go down my esophagus. I mean, meat meat is not going down my esophagus. Sometimes I can eat very, very soft fish like tilapia. Um, if it's super, super soft, and just crumbles and breaks up. And the little, you know, breaks all up. But then sometimes I can't, so it doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes I can drink water and sometimes I can't drink water. It just depends, you know. But just because I can eat something one day don't mean I can eat it the next day. Such as mashed potatoes. They're not, they don't always go down. Ice cream doesn't always go down. It just, it just depends. I don't know. But I do miss pizza and hamburgers. And actually, when, when this did get this bad, um, I don't know, about three and a half, four years ago, whenever it was, me and Big Daddy and Angela had went out to eat. We waited for Thursday night for steak night at the barbecue place. And we went and each got this grilled steak. They have these delicious grilled steaks. They're 20 bucks a steak. And we went, you know, we had decided we were going and kind of, um, you know, planned it out and everything. And we got there and Big Daddy cut up some of my steak and little bitty slivers. It wouldn't go down. I took one bite and spent the rest of the evening in the bathroom throwing up. Now, Angela and Jody, they didn't miss a bite. They kept right on eating. 
did not miss a bite. I would go in the bathroom and throw up. I'd come back and sit down. I, I didn't try to eat anymore. I was trying to drink some tea to help what was in my esophagus that was going down. I'd drink a little tea, and then I'd have to jump up and run to the bathroom and throw up. And I'd come back and sit down, jump up and run to the bathroom and throw up. And we were sitting right next to the bathroom, thankfully. But... They just kept right on eating. They did not miss a bite. I was so mad at them. Because, I mean, I wanted a steak. I, I knew those steaks are so good. And, yeah. So, I told them, next time we're coming here and I'm going to get a steak and y'all are going to sit there and watch me eat. <laughs> just picking with them. I expected them to eat their meal. I wouldn't want anybody's food to go to waste or, you know, just because of me. But anyway, we left there, and so I I took a cup in the truck with me when we left there. And Big Daddy, we went down to the grocery store. He went in and got me some ice cream. And we came home, and he fixed me a bowl of ice cream, and I, it wouldn't go down. I was throwing it up. I could not drink tea. I could not eat ice cream. So I went to bed the next morning. I got up and I tried to drink some water and I threw it up. Nothing would go down. And and all this time throughout the night, my saliva could not go down my esophagus either, okay? And when my esophagus is closed, it's closed. Nothing goes down. So I have to get rid of that saliva. I mean, I'm sorry to be gross and sit here and talk about nasty gross stuff but you have to get rid of that saliva too because it can only fill up so far your esophagus and then it's backed up and you got to empty it so yeah and so uh it was, was a this was at the very beginning of a december one year and so i ended up in the er because i could not get nothing down this was before i had a feeding tube and I went to the hot ER, and they're just like, yeah, just swallow the water. I'd swallow the water, and I'd just throw it up. And then they're just like, well, try this. Try that. If water's not going down, pudding's not going down, jello's not going down. I mean, let's use some common sense there. But anyway, I ended up spending um, maybe about four days in the hospital. And, um, so finally I could tell that my esophagus was opening up because the, um, saliva was getting less. And so I could, I knew that it, some was going down because it was getting less and less. And so about two days in or one and a half days in or something, it, it finally opened up enough that I could drink water because I was just getting nothing except IV and um, it finally opened up so I could drink liquids and so they put me on boost and so that's what I was on and then after that I and they were running tests and stuff on my esophagus and all so after that then I had several series of tests done and had one test, and then I had to go to a Shreveport and have a test done where they put, um, like an ultrasound camera down my esophagus and had me to drink some stuff and it would, um, you know, show like an ultrasound of what was going on. And that's when they found out that my esophagus did not work, like it did not contract, um, Wait, am I still talking about... <laughs> um, your esophagus kind of like squeezes as you're um, eating food and pushes your food down. Mine does nothing. It's just like a PVC pipe. It's hardened. Scleroderma hardened my esophagus. So it doesn't do anything. It just... And I'm trying to, you know, swallow food. Or whatever and then sometimes it closes off where you know like liquid does not even go down 
So anyway, just for anybody new here that didn't know all that, that's why I can't eat pizza or hamburgers or whatever. And I guess I answered all that correctly. So anyway, Big Daddy ended up having my steak and stuff the next day because, you know, we took it home. He had all that the next day and... I still was optimistic that I was going to be able to eat again. I kept telling him and Angela that I can't wait to go back and me get a steak and then watch me eat. <laughs> and I teased him about that all the time. I'm like, y'all didn't even miss a bite. <laughs> like it didn't even phase them that I was getting up and going to the bathroom throwing up so much. They just kept right on eating and talking. I tease them about it. Uh, somebody asked, does Angela have any of my crochet items? I've crocheted her and her mom dishcloths, dish rags, hand towels, and I crocheted Angela a, um, blanket one year. Um, kind of like this, except it wasn't the squares in the middle. It was just a regular strip that you start with on a granny rectangle and go around. So, and it was, um, it was a Karen cake, and I put about four Karen cakes in that, and then I needed something to do a border, so I, um, took it with me and kind of matched up some I Love This Yarn to go around the border and ended up with like an ivory color that worked out great with that. So she does have some, okay, so somebody asked, do I drink water because I'm always drinking tea or coffee? No, I don't really drink water. I don't like water and I'm not sorry about it. I just don't like water. I do get water through my feeding tube um, when we get my meds and we flush. We flush before feedings. We flush after feedings with water. So I, I do get some water, but I don't just get a glass of water and drink it. I don't like water. All right, let's see. Someone asked about if we play board games. We used to have a ton of board games. And we used to have game night at our house all the time. When my kids were growing up, they could invite friends over. And um, we had game nights. And we had roast hot dogs or hamburgers and stuff like that. And all the time we were doing that. So we had tons and tons of board games. We lost most of those in 2016, and so we got a few, you know, just to replace some that of the kids' favorites, but um, right now, I don't think me and Big Daddy have any board games in the house. We have a storage container outside that um, has some board games in it, maybe, but... Um, Everything in there spills musty, musty, and so I, I don't bring in any of that in. Really and truly, I'm not. So no, I don't think we have any board games in the house at the moment. Um, I think we have poker. <laughs> yeah, we have a big poker set. Big Daddy has a folding poker case not a table or anything just a case with the poker chips and cards and all in it we do have that and we used to have poker nights his brother and sister-in-law would come and um we'd have poker night and um eat and cook and you know all that kind of stuff uh so somebody asked how did you not get defeated when you were homeschooling feeling defeated girl we had days we had days where we all cried we had days where i cried we had days where we just had to close the books and go do something else and the next day was a new day not every day in homeschooling is beautiful fun sunny day it's lots of ups and downs um especially when you're homeschooling you know like two kids multiple kids different grade levels and you're you know you gotta 
do this, do that, and make it all work. Some days it worked beautifully. Some days, oh my gosh, the day seemed like it drug on forever and was never going to end. But, um, you know, that's just the way it is. School teachers have bad days, too. She probably has days where she cries. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um... Someone said that they have a notebook. I was asking about writing, you know, how do you keep up with things you need to remember. You know, I said I had a little notebook here I was jotting things on. She says she has a notebook and she's got it titled Brain on the front. And um, I I get it. I, I used to call Dakota my brain because he remembered everything for me. And now he can't remember anything either, so... It's probably because he's trying to remember too much. I did get me a little um, new notebook at Walmart the other day. It's just like a little 70 page. Yep, I think it's 70 page notebook. It's yellow. So I did get a new notebook the other night when we got groceries. And... Because I, I was running out of pages in the one that I'm currently jotting crap down in. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Someone asked how... Let me see. Where's that at? How old I'm going to be on my birthday. My birthday is April the 2nd. And I will be 53 years old. And she was saying she was 57. And she was wondering how much older she is than me. So... About four years. And then someone asked, um, how long did me and Big Daddy date before I knew he was the one? Before we ever went out on a date, I knew he was the one. Um, the lady pastor that I mentioned before that I've known my whole life, she came in Walmart one day, because that's where I got him from. Um, and I said, you want to see who I'm going to marry? And she's like, sure, yeah, yeah. And so we went over there, and I was like, okay, I'll look down this aisle, and we walked by there. And there he was, and I told her, that's who I'm going to marry. And that's who I married. And that was before we ever went out. I don't think I chained two there. Uh, it was before we ever went out and stuff, so, or really even talked. Matter of fact, I didn't really even know his name. So, um... Somebody asked, did Angela and I live close when we were kids? Yes. Like, um, say this gray one is my street. This gray one is her street. So, say I lived here. There was a street behind my house. And then she lived, like, here on this street. So, her backyard went this way and my backyard went this way. And so, we just cut through like that. And so she, we were, you know, back and forth, cutting through there. And then there was woods all down here. We played in those woods. And um, there was a pond or something back there. And we we played in that and done all kinds of stuff that most parents would have been worried about their kids for doing. I think I'm just missing doing my... My chain, too. And then Angela came to my house every morning before we got on the school bus. Hey, Big Daddy, will you give me something to drink? Thank you, baby. She came to my morning, my house every morning before we got on the school bus. And we would feed my brother a bottle and change him and get him back to sleep before we left for school because my mom was asleep so we did that every morning she'd come to my house and, and she'd just catch the bus at my house so this is you know we were like 13 years old she would come to my house every morning before school we'd feed the baby change him and put him back to bed and then we would go to school yeah that's just so crazy to think about that, really. And we've mentioned that several times here lately. Like, not too long ago, we did talk about that. 
Ugh. Okay, so somebody wants to know what streaming channels I have and how do I rate them. I'll tell you what we have, but I don't know if I can rate them because I watch something on all of them, okay? Now, the way we do streaming channels may not be the way your family does it, but the way my family does it is we share our passwords. Nobody's going to tell me I can't share my password when I'm paying for something. So, we all share passwords between me and Elijah, Dakota, and Angela. So, this is what we have. We have Netflix, Hulu, Prime, Peacock. HBO, Disney Plus, Philo, and Paramount Plus. And I think the rest of them on my thing are like freebies, like um, little free stuff that you can, you know, streamers. But anyway, um, like Pluto and stuff like that, it's free. You just can't watch probably everything on there. I don't know. But anyway, um, to rate those, I would say... Well, I watch something on every one of them. I'm watching, I watch stuff on Netflix. I watch stuff on Hulu. I watch Prime. I watch Peacock. I watch HBO, which now I think they just call Max. I watch Disney Plus. I watch Philo. I watch Paramount Plus. So I can't say that I like one better than the other. I like, I like them all. Oh, thank you, baby. Mm. Big day just brought me something to drink. Um, I like them all, really and truly. I just watch all the streaming channels. Um, I watch Netflix um, a lot on my tablet from my bed. I watch Netflix or Prime. Um, and then if I'm in here and I get, you know, I'm able... I watch Able. I mean, if, you know, my hotspot's connected good enough that I can. I watch um, Hulu or Peacock, HBO, Philo. Um, that's a good one to have. That's kind of the most expensive one we have, I think. Um, and Angela pays for it. Um, I watch a lot on it because you can you can always find something to watch. If you can't find what need something on any other streaming channel, you can on follow. There's always like little sitcoms like Reba or Everybody Loves Raymond or King, King of Queens. Um, there's always something like that playing. And then there's a Hallmark channels are on it. Some. I don't think it's the Hallmark channel, but it's some Hallmark stations. Um, Lifetime stations. Uh, TLC. Which, um, let's see. There's, there's lots of things on there. There's a lot of channels I don't watch on there. But you can always find something on Philo. That's for sure. Okay, so somebody asked, why do I only use this? Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't only use this hook. It depends on the project. Now, if I was making something for one of my dolls, a hat, or a dress or something, I wouldn't use this hook. But this is my size 6 J, a 6 millimeter J hook. And that's what I use for blankets. And um, it just fits in my hand good, and I can crochet really well with this this hand, this finger. And that's just what I use for these projects. Those hooks over there are different sizes, and um, you know, so I'm sticking with the same size. So they asked, why do I only use this hook? Um, that's why I I do use those hooks, but it depends on the project, you know. That I'm doing. And the size of hook I need. And then if I'm going to leave the house. And take a crochet project. I take different hooks with me. Um, a cheaper hooks that. 
uh, you know, that come from Hobby Lobby or something. So, yeah. I use all kinds of hooks. I do. I don't just use this hook. This is just, if I'm going to use a J hook, this is the hook I'm going to use, though. Depends on the project. Oh, let's see. Well, let me see. Um, oh, Annette, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Annette. You're okay. You're fine with what you said. Don't worry about that. I know. Okay, so a lot of times I deal with bad things with humor. And it may sound crude to just, you know, when I'm talking about my finger, to say actually what they're going to do. It, that might sound crude to say C-U-T, <laughs> but that's what it is, okay? And then, you know, sometimes I just use hum humor, and I'm telling you, a lot of times in the past fingers, people did not know I was losing fingers until, like, I had a surgery date. And, see, I done processed the whole thing. I went through crying my eyes out. I've accepted it. I've already learned to use the next finger. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm getting a finger cut off Thursday. And then people were like, what? You know, and so then they're grieving for me. And I've already went through the grieving process. So then I tried to start telling people earlier <laughs> so that they could grieve with me and wouldn't be like so saddened at the end when I've already went through all that. So sometimes I would say things like, um, looks like I'm going back to the chopping block, you know, things like that. Because sometimes it's just easier to use humor than, you know, to say amputation or remove the finger, you know. So I'm sorry, Annette, that's, that's on me. I, I know, I just use crazy terminology you know and say things that just helps me get through it so don't don't worry about what you said um you're fine and i hope that i hope that you can handle me i hope you can handle me annette uh, i know i'm crazy uh so what college did my boys attend they both went to delta here in um our town, well, Dakota went to Delta and Monroe campus, and Elijah went to the Delta campus in West Monroe because the course he was taking, the EMT course and all, was through them. Now, Dakota would have liked to have been a professional college student. He, um, he went to college... He started out, he ended up changing his major, and then um, he had credits that didn't go towards anything. He had credits that went towards English. Um, so he finally graduated in... an English degree? Am I saying that right? With... Um, with also arts and humanities. I think I'm saying that correctly. And then he thought he wanted to go on and be a history teacher. But um, we just, he didn't qualify for any help, okay? <laughs> and we just couldn't afford it. I mean, we paid for his college. We saved up and paid each semester. Um, and we got him through that. I mean, if he was going to go further, he had to do it on his own. You know, we had to buy books and everything. And I mean, each semester we would, was paying it out and classes had to be paid for, like for that semester by certain dates. And we were making those payments by those dates and getting that paid for. We did not want to do the student loan route because, as you all probably know, a lot of you are probably paying, still paying for student loans that you're not even working in that degree or whatever. So we were not going to do the student loan, and I encouraged him not to do the student loan thing. 
because he'd be paying on it the rest of his life. And I'm sure he's grateful that he don't have student loans. But we just couldn't afford to keep sending him to college. I mean, he would have went forever. He'd still be going at 32 years old um, if we were paying for it and he could go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So he finished that up, but then guess what? Then he decided to go and get his phlebotomy license. So he um, started school for that and went and got his phlebotomy license. So, yeah, and he would have went on and done more if we would have kept paying for it. But we had another kid coming up that we needed to start paying for, right? <laughs> So we just told him, if you can figure out a way to pay for it, go for it. But the buck stops here. We got another kid that we got to start paying for college for and saving up stuff. So, yeah, that's the way it worked. It's the way it works in our house. We will help you and all that we can, but we do have, we do have a limit. And you got to start on your own. And plus, he already had degrees, you know. He had an English degree. Um, and then the Arts and Humanities degree. And then a secondary, I think, or something. I don't know. And then he had, um, you know, his phlebotomy license. So we felt like um, you can pretty much go and do something now. <laughs> And then Elijah, we, you know, paid for him to get his EMT course. So, yeah. And right when he finished the EMT course uh, is when COVID had hit. And so he was delayed for a good while before he could take the second part of the test. He took the hands-on part of the test. And then when he was supposed to go take, they, they stopped giving the test. Because you had to go take the written part um, in Shreveport, actually. But then they stopped giving it because of COVID. And so he was very delayed in going and taking that. And uh, it was probably, I don't know, probably maybe even the next year before he finally got to take that. It was, it was a while before they started all that back up. But anyway, um, I think that's all the questions that I had, and yeah, it's about long enough, right? <laughs> so guys, if you have a question, drop it in the comments be below. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, so far, it's Tuesday. Um, let's claim it, it's a great week, and we're just going to... Let's see, what am I going to do today? I'm going to crochet on this blanket. I at least need to get... Tuesday. I at least need to get... Uh, let me see how many balls I got here. Let's see. These two have to go in today for sure. And then let's see. Um, three. That ain't right. <laughs> That's the order of my ball starting down here. So I'm going to get these in and hopefully about at least that. At least that much in today. And then Wednesday, whatever's left over. And then Thursday, the gray. So that's my plans for this blanket. And then we will be at March the 1st, the day after that. And I'll probably start with granny squares that day for those granny square crossover bags that i'm gonna do and i'm probably just gonna make a whole bunch of granny squares and then maybe on the weekends put them together and do straps that's what i'm thinking it would be kind of easy for me to do so that's the plan man but i hope you all have a great rest of your day yeah, that's what I was saying. Today I'm going to finish up this. If I finish that and I have time, I might add some more. Who knows? But, um, that's my goal for today. I'm going to finish that up. And, um, I'm working on some stuff in the doll room. And I want to work on that some. Because I really want to do what I'm doing and get it done before... 
um, if if I have to have my finger removed, <laughs> there's things I want done before then, right? So, yeah, I need my yarn room cleaned up. Um, I'm putting together a, um, some shopping, a shopping center and some stores in the doll room. And I want to get that put together and squared away and just, there's just so much I want to do. I want to go through, um, the craft drawers in the yarn room closet and bring all the crafty stuff from those drawers to the drawers in the dining room so that I can get to them easier. Because when they're in the closet, when those drawers are in the closet, like in the yarn room, I have to move whatever's in the bottom of that closet to get to those drawers, and that's not working out too good for me. I, I just can't do that. I can't continue to do that. So I need all that crafty stuff brought to the dining room some drawers in there so that I can continue to craft and such so and I can't get in there and clean that out by myself I, I need help doing that so I don't know I don't know you know my little buddy Zeke helps me a lot but um he has schoolwork and then they have they take soccer um, some of the kids have like some different types of therapies and things they go to and they have homeschool activities. Um, so they have a lot going on. So, um, he can't always come down just any time that I need him. We have to like schedule that out a lot of times. So, yeah, <laughs> that's where we're at. So I don't know if those things will get done before. I would have to have surgery or not. I would like for them to so that after I come home from surgery, I'm not, you know, having to try to do those things or trying to, you know, I just want things easy for me when I come home. Like if I decide to go sit in my doll room, even with my hand bandaged up, I can go sit in my doll room and do things with this hand, you know. Whatever I can do with that hand. Big Daddy's really good about, like, changing my doll's clothes for me. I just take the doll and the clothes I want on it to him. And he puts them on them. So, he's really good about that. But anyway, yeah, that's my plans. Is try to piddle around here and do some things that I want done to make life easier on me. Now, I can't do a whole lot, but I'll attempt well, guys, I love you all, and I just appreciate you spending time with me. You just don't know. Y'all mean the world to me. And I love each and every one of y'all, all 23,000 of you. <laughs> love you very much. But remember, it's a beautiful day to crochet, and I hope you enjoy your day. Do something today that makes you happy and that you enjoy. Bye, friends. See you in the next video.